So I guess I can't do it from home. No, you, you have to. Work. No, no, no. You have to be on the on the directly between velocity and time or velocity and distance like as we used to like v is equal to 5 t squared plus 2 or something so that's why you are used to to get a relationship like this so that you can get dv to t to get the acceleration right so we can differentiate 10 t plus 0 okay i don't have to give the equation directly you should be able to I give you some information to build this equation, like half. Like for example, I can give you a, a relationship between V and T. For example, a linear relationship, and I give you some point here. Like I tell you, tell you like this is six, and this is actually the velocity is equal ten. Here's time is equal, for example, um, three seconds. So if I give you a linear relationship between velocity and time, will you be able to plot? V, sorry, to capture the formulation or the formula of V function of It's a linear relationship. So you can you know that if a line like this V is gonna be for example A T plus T, right? And you need to find A and B. B is the intercept, which is the six, and A is the slope of the line. So you can do that if I give it a line. I cannot, for example, give you a line. For example, I can give you V note, T note, V and T. I can give you just these numbers. You can get them to the line. So what you can do, you can plot them, or you can directly use them to get the equation, right? So I give you two points, and you have one equation to unknown. So you can use these two points to find A and B, right? This also can't be as a function of t. I can give you the velocity as a function of the distance, like 6 x squared plus 2s plus 1. I can give it directly, or I can give it as a relationship, right? And if I ask you for the acceleration, this is something that you need to take care of. For example, if I ask you for the acceleration, and the velocity is this equation, so what are you going to do? the time derivative of the velocity. So you differentiate with respect to t, right? How about this? I give you the velocity as a function of s, and I want to ask you for acceleration. What you are going to do? Same thing. You are going to differentiate velocity with respect to t, but be, be careful because this is s, not t. So when you differentiate this, it's going to be, for example, dv dt. The derivative of s with respect to t you guys know how to differentiate this with respect to t, not s. If it's s, it's going to be easy, yeah. right? 2 multiplied by 6 is going to be 12s. The difference is it's going to be 12s multiplied by ds dt. Okay? Same thing here, like if you differentiate dv dt, so you are going to differentiate with this with respect to t, it's going to be 10t multiplied by dt dt. One, right? But here you differentiate ds with respect to dt, both sides, this side and this side dt. So this is going to be 12s ds dt, and this is not equal to one like here. This needs to be outside like this. Same thing, you differentiate 2s, it's going to be 2 ds dt, right? Plus 0. You guys understand that? Like if I give you an equation, any equation like y equal 3x cubed plus 2x. If I ask you to differentiate this equation with respect to x, it's very, it's a very easy. But if I ask you to differentiate this equation with respect to t, so it's 
gonna be dy dt and here's this dx dt. After you differentiate this, you put ds dt or dx dt. Okay, but if I differentiate with respect to dx, so it's gonna be dx dx, which is one, something like this. All right, do you guys understand this? This is basics of differentiation. You need to watch what are you differentiating with respect to what? dt or ds, usually when we get velocity or when we get acceleration, we usually differentiate with respect to time. But sometimes your function is not function in time, it's function in distance. So you will end up having ds dt after the differentiation. And we know that all that the dx dt is a velocity, right? So this is gonna be 12x multiplied by the velocity plus two multiplied by the velocity plus z. Okay, so there's some notes to keep in your mind while solving the quiz, right? Okay, so <coughs> let's start the lecture today. So over the last <coughs> three lectures, we have been studying the rectilinear motion, curved linear motion with xy coordinate. And we had an application on the projectile. So today we are gonna continue the curved linear motion with application on the tangent of normal circle, the circle has a constant radius, right? So the circle is something like this. Here, radius r, and here is radius r. But if you have a general curve like this, the radius is keep changing in terms of the, the magnitude and the location with the, with the, at each point on the curve. Like for example, the radius here is something like this, here. The radius here is something like this. So it's keep, it's changing. Where is the radius at? Because each segment of this curve is part of the circle, but we don't know what is the properties of this circle. Okay? So for example, I'm getting to this point and I have the center is here. And if and always the radius is perpendicular on the curve, something like this. And if I get to another point, it's gonna be something like this. So the tangent normal is something like this. tangent direction is always in the direction of the increasing speed and it's perpendicular to the radius, something like this. This is the tangent direction. And the normal is always perpendicular to the tangent in the direction of the radius. So here, the tangent is gonna be something like this and the normal is gonna be something like this. It changes direction because the radius got to change. So this is what is the tangent uh, normal directions look like. And it has same principles when it comes to the unit vector. Like for example, when we studied the unit vectors, if this is y direction and this is x direction and this is z direction. So the unit vectors is something like this. I have the unit vector has a magnitude of one and it's in the direction of the x. So this is I hat. And the y is j 
hat. So magnitude of y and in the direction of y, and this is k hat in the direction of z. So if you have any point, like for example, if I have a point here, and I'm something like this, at the distance x equal to, for example, 3, and distance y equal 5, and maybe distance z equal 6. So if I want to give a vector for the location of point b, so I know the magnitude in, in x direction. So b has three units in the direction of i hat, and five units in the direction of j hat, and six units in the direction of k hat, right? So we all agree with that. Same thing if we are working with tangent normal direction. So the tangent normal is something also like this. So you have, this is the tangent direction, and this is the normal direction, and they are perpendicular to each other, just like making it 2D. And it has, and also if you want to make the tangent normal in 3D, you can add the Z direction as well. Here it has the same thing. You, have, you, you cut a unit value, and this is going to be called T hat, and same thing here is N hat, right? So these are the unit vectors. Right, so let's have a quick example to show why do we need a tangent normal relationship. For example, if you have a particle position is described by the relationship between y and x, like y is equal to sine 2x, okay? So this is how we can describe the location of the particle. Okay, so how can I draw this? Make an x direction and y direction. And also I'm giving to you, like, if x more than zero and less than y over two, the velocity is increasing. And if x is more than y over two and, and less than y, the velocity is increasing, okay? First, I need to draw the location of the bar. You guys know how to draw a sine curve? How's the sine curve look like? Something like this. But here is 2x, not x. So there's a little bit difference. How? Okay, let's see. If x equal y over 2, or let's just start by 5 over 4. Let's make it here. 5 over 4, 5 over 2, 3, 5 over 2, and 5. So at 5 over 4, what is the value of y if x is equal to y over 4? So it's going to be sine y over 2, and sine y over 2 is equal to y over 2 is 90 degrees, right? Y is, 100, y is 180, y over 2 is 90 degrees, sine 90 is equal to 1. Y over 2, if I put x is y over 2, multiplied by 2 is going to be y, which is 180 degrees, sine 180 degrees is 0. Okay? And then this is going to be negative 1, and this is going to be 0. So if you draw this, it's going to be something like this. Right? This is how the relationship between y and x look like. Okay, so we have a particle. It's moving on this curve with this relationship. So the particle at any position can be here, can be here, here. Or here. So let's see how the tangent normal is keep it changing. Okay. So here, as, as I said, the tangent is always in the direction of the speed, the increasing speed. So I have the speed is going this way, so the particle is moving this way, so this is the tangent. The normal is perpendicular to the tangent, so it's always 90 degrees between them. Okay. But which way? Is this way or this way? To the radius, which is this application, this way, right? Not the other way. So you have the tin, the normal is in this way. How about this one? This one is the vertical is moving this way, so this is the tangent, and this is the normal. This one, the tangent is this way, and the normal is this way. This one, the tangent is this way, and the normal is this way. So the first thing, the tangent normal problems, you need to find out where is the tangent direction. 
where's the normal direction? Because if you mess that up, the whole problem is gonna be wrong. Okay, so right now I figured out like the tangent is always in the direction of the particle while it's moving. So it's this way, and the normal is in the direction of the radius. Okay? Alright, so right now the velocity it says it's increasing. Okay, so the velocity is increasing. That means what that what does it mean it's increasing? That means the acceleration is positive. Okay, the velocity is increasing, so that means positive acceleration. This one is negative acceleration. All right, so the velocity is always tangent. There is nothing that we can call that the velocity has um, a component normal. Okay, so the velocity is always in the direction of, of the curve. Like if you have a circle like this and you have a particle here, so the velocity is always, all the components is in the tangent direction. Like this here, it's moving this way. It doesn't have a component this way. But the acceleration always has a tangent component and a normal component, okay? So it has a tangent and normal component. We're gonna talk about this uh, in a little bit. So if I want to get the direction of the velocity, the velocity is gonna be this way, v. And here, the velocity is always in the tangent, v. And this is v, and this is so it's always in the tangent direction, okay? This is the velocity. The acceleration has two components. One of them, as I said, it's normal, and the other one is tangent, right? And the normal is always in the normal direction. It's always going towards the center, like this. So this is the acceleration, acceleration, normal. But the tangent acceleration, it depends if the if the particle is speeding up, it's gonna be in the same direction as the velocity. And if the, if the particle is slowing down, so it's gonna be in the opposite direction. So I'm saying that the velocity is speeding up from zero to y over two, so it's gonna be in the same direction of the velocity here, like this. It's gonna be here and here. But here, it's a slowing down, so it's mean in the other direction. I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit, like how to prove the velocity component, the acceleration component, but I'm just giving you a feeling of how the uh, relationship between the velocity and acceleration on a curve look like, okay? It's the things that are gonna get a little bit difficult because we are dealing with 2D stuff, tangent and normal, so I need to give full concentration so that we can get this right. Okay, so, but before I start, I need to make sure that you have some basics. Um, let's just start on this circle, okay. So this is a circle, right? And it has a radius r. And if this is a theta, do you guys know what is the length of this curve, S? What is the length of this curve? Theta is this, this circle. So what is the length of this r? The length of this r, okay. What is the perimeter of this circle? The perimeter is what? And it's our two pi multiplied by r, right? Where this is coming from? This is coming from two pi is this 360 degrees. This one is two pi, <coughs> right? Multiplied by the r, so it gives you the whole length of this r. What if I ask you, I need to know what is the length of one quarter of a circle, this quarter. This quarter has an angle 90 degrees, and this 90 degrees is pi over two. So this is pi over two multiplied by r. So if you wanna have the circle, it's gonna be pi over r multiplied by r. If you wanna, a part of the circle, you need to find what is the value of this theta, and you get this theta and multiply it by r, but this theta should be in radians, not degrees. Like if, if it's like 30 degrees, you cannot put 30 degrees. How to convert it from radians to degrees? So the two pi, you know, it's, 360 degrees. So for example, if this is 30 degree and you wanted to know how much in radian it is, so this is gonna be 30 over 360 multiplied by two r. Okay, so this is how you convert an angle from 30 degree to radian. Once you convert it to radian, you multiply the radian value of this angle by r, okay? So if you wanna get the length of any piece of the circle, you need to find what is the opposite theta to this part of the circle, and then multiply by the radius. And this is how we get the perimeter of a circle. 
2 pi multiplied by r. So this is the first thing that we need to learn before I start the tangent normal. Second thing, if you have a tangent at this location, okay, and on this r, the particle moved here until it got here, what is the direction of the velocity of this particle was this way, and when it came here, it come this way. Why? Because it's always tangent. What is the change in the direction from here to here? How many degrees? 90 degrees, right? And how did I know that? You draw the line from here and a line from here. So it, this line moved like this, 90 degrees. And if this particle came here, it's going to be 180. And if it's here, it's 270. What if it's uh, just a small theta, like let's say p theta, and the particle move from here to here, so the change in the angle is just z theta of the velocity, okay? So there's some basics that we need to agree on. Does anyone have any questions related to this? All right, so let's start. All right, as we start with any coordinate system, the same way that we did with rec linear, Cartesian, we identify the position, the velocity, the x version. So let's do the same thing. But I'm gonna start with the velocity. All right, for the velocity, the v vector, and I'm always gonna use vector because here, the velocities keep it changing magnitude and direction. For example, as I said here, if the velocity is this way, so it has this direction. Maybe the magnitude is constant, but if it came here with magnitude, constant, velocity, the direction is changing. This is it's going in the i direction, this is going in the v direction. So I need to always write the velocity here as a vector, so not as a scalar quantity. So the velocity as a vector has a magnitude v without vector, and I know it's always in the tangential component. Like it's always has, I can write it in u t hat or t hat, like this one. This is t hat, right? t hat can be written t hat, a t hat, or u t hat. I can write this in a different way, okay? So I know that the velocity has a magnitude v and it's always in the tangent component, right? So the velocity has a magnitude and the magnitude that is always equal to the time derivative of the position with respect to t. This as a magnitude, like for example, if I have a point moving on this curve, it was here, and it came here, if I want to know the magnitude, not the direction, I need to find what is the s and how much time it takes the po this point to come from here to here, and I divide s over t. That's for sure. But the direction, I need to find out the direction by myself. Okay, so as a quantity or as a magnitude, it's always ds dt, and I have ut hat as a direction. However, if it's a curve, as we saw here, as we said, what is the value of s? Here, theta multiplied by r, right? It is the, the angle multiplied by the radius. And if it's here, like this is just only for circle. But if we are talking about a general curve, a general curve, we, we name the radius as a row, okay? So the rows keep changing. This is row, and this is row dash. And if you come here, this is row double dash, okay? So it's keep it changing every, but actually also the position, like you can have different location, like row double dash is something like a different way. Okay, so I have row. So if I want to write it general, so S is gonna be equal to row, and we call it DS. Why I call it ds? Since the radius of this curve is a changing, like let's have the curve here, okay? So I can generalize one single radius for this curve, right? So what we do, we take an infinitesimal distance of this curve, and we call it ds, okay? And then the radius will not have a chance to change in ds because ds is like 0.00001, okay? Like very, very small distance. And here is the radius, and I assume that they both of them have the same at the same point. So both of them have the value of rho because this is a d theta, and this d theta is 
almost equal to zero. It's very, very small. And this is ds. Same thing that we apply for the circle. If you want to find the value of ds, you multiply the radius by d theta. Same thing that we applied, that we did it for the circle. If you want to find s, you multiply r by theta. Okay, so if you want to find ds dt, you need to differentiate these two quantities. Do you remember if you have two variables, x and y, and both of them are changing and you need to differentiate them? How? You differentiate the first one and multiply it by the second one, and then you differentiate the second one and multiply it by the first one. You know this rule for differentiation? If you have two variables like x and y, but right now the radius didn't get a chance, a chance to change its constant from this point to this point. So I put rho as a constant, and I differentiate this theta with respect to t. So it's gonna be something like this. So d theta by dt, we can call it theta dot. So dot means that this theta got differentiated with respect to the time by one degree, okay? So we can write it this way. And we call theta dot angular velocity. Okay, so let's take rho theta dot and put it here. Rho theta dot. So the velocity is equal to rho theta dot multiplied by u t hat. Does anybody have any questions till now? Oh. Ut is the direction. It's like when we said the, the unit direction i j k, it is the same thing that we use for tangent normal, t hat or n hat or et hat or e n hat. So I'm saying that the velocity has a magnitude, rho theta dot in the direction tangent. Here, tangent, okay? So that means the direction, right? But the thing is about the tangent direction, it's keep it changing over time. Like if this is the curve, let's see here. Actually, let's take this part and I make it big here. Like, let's take this small part, I'm gonna draw it like something like this big here. So you will have the perpendicular is something like this, and the perpendicular is something here like this, okay? So they are gonna meet at some point over there, and this is rho, and this is rho. And this is perpendicular, and this is perpendicular, okay? Technically, this shouldn't meet, because they are perpendicular, so they should, like, go together. But this area is very, very small. Like they are almost on, like mm -hmm. on top of each other because this is very small. But I take it here very big. And also this is a curve, like not um, a line. Like this. it's something like like this. Okay. But I take it out and I make it big so that we can focus on this one. Right. Okay. So if I if I look at this one, I will find that the tangent is something this way. So this is the direction of u t hat here. And here, the tangent is something like this. So this is the direction of u t hat, something like this. But actually, I made this big. If I wrote it here, they are going to look like something like this and something like this. So this is the u t hat, and this is the u t hat there. All right? but I made it big so that we can um, like find the difference. Okay, so right now, u t hat is keep it changing, right? From this point to this point. It's not the same. And you will tell me, what is the angle between them? Look at this circle, what we did over there. What, what does that mean? d theta, excellent. How? <coughs> We said, like, if I have the velocities going this way, and it came this way, so the change in the direction is 90 degree, which is the angle between the two perpendiculars. So if it's this here and this here, so the change in the direction is this theta. Same thing here, is the change in the angle from this point to this point is very, very small, but it's equal to the d theta, which is the perpendicular of the two lines, okay? So we have that, okay. So I'm gonna get back to this, but let's look at the velocity. If I want to get the acceleration from the velocity, what should I do? Hmm. 
velocity, I want to get the acceleration vector. It's going to be the first derivative of the velocity, right? Okay, so let's differentiate the velocity. It has rho, it has theta dot, it has ut. What is the variable to here? Is the rho its variable? Rho in this interval, this is small interval, it's constant, right? So it's gonna be the same. But theta is a changing, right? Theta is a changing all over the curve from here to here. I see the changing with speed theta because this is very small. And ut hat is a changing in direction. So the velocity is a changing in magnitude and direction. So you have two components are changing. So when you differentiate with respect to time, you need to take care that there is two variables are changing. So if I want to differentiate this, so it's going to be the derivative of the first part. So it's going to be rho theta. And if you differentiate this with respect to the time, it's going to be theta double dot, right? Multiplied by this as it is, like u t hat. So I'm done with the first part. The second part is going to be rho multiplied by this as is theta dot and the derivative of this part, d u t hat d t. And this is, comes from this rule of differentiation. So if you have u is equal to x, y, and you want to differentiate u with respect to the time, d u d t is going to be dx d t multiplied by y plus x multiplied by dy d t, right? Same thing I did it here. I have two variable. I multiply, I differentiate the first variable, I multiply by ut hat, and then differentiate the second variable, multiply by theta dot. So here's two terms. Okay, so this term makes sense to me, like all, everything's good, but this one, I need to find what is the value of d u t hat dt. I don't want to keep derivatives in this equation. I need to find what is this term mean. So to do this, I need to have a d block on these two components. All right, so what I have here, like let's take this out. Okay, let's take this out here. So I have, ut hat is something like this, and this is a un hat. I think that, but un hat is something like this, and this one is something if I put these two on top of each other, take this one and I put it on top of this one here. U T hat dash, and this is actually U N hat dash, right? I put them on top of each other. So if I want to change, find out what is the change in the U T and U T hat, so this is a change in direction and magnitude, but let's find out how it, how it looks like. So both of them almost have the same length. Like what is the magnitude of ut hat and ut? It's an unit vector, right? It has a magnitude of one. So the both of their magnitudes are one, like this ut hat dash, and this is un hat. It has a magnitude of one and has a direction this way. So the the, the the difference between them is just this part. So if you want to go from this one to this one, you have to cut this one. So this is the difference. So if you want to find d u t hat, you need to find what is this value, d u t hat, the difference between u t and u t hat dash. So how I can find the value of this one? This is like a circle, like you have, um, like this is, something like this, and it's moving like this. This is how the UT hat is a change. Same thing here on the circle. Like the UT hat is, is like this way, and it's keeping tangent, 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 something like this. Same thing here. If you put them on top of each other, it's gonna be something like a circle. So if you know the angle between these two, which is D theta, this one, you can find the length of this part. What is the magnitude of this part? Or what is the value of this part? So, if this is a circle, and this is the theta, and this is the radius, so what is the value of this one, like ds? Uh, ut times ut theta. What is that? Ut times ut theta. Okay, ut hat multiplied by d theta, right? Because this is the radius and this is the theta. But this is not a scalar quantity, so you need to convert it to scalar quantity because we are looking at magnitude, not 
a direction. So I need the magnitude of this, and I multiply it by d theta, it's gonna give me the magnitude of this part. But the direction is different. Like this direction is completely different from this direction. This is perpendicular to yuki hat, like this u n hat. So the direction of yuki hat is in the direction of u n hat. You guys got this? Like this is perpendicular to u t hat like in the direction of the u n hat. So it has a magnitude of u t hat multiplied by u theta and in the direction of u n hat. So what is the magnitude of u t hat? It's one in the ionic vector. So one multiplied by u theta u n hat. So what I'm looking for from all that, and that's actually what I'm, I'm not going to ask you to prove anything, but I want to prove that. If I divide this over dt and I divide this over dt, so d u t hat dt is equal to d theta hat dt, which is theta dot in the un hat. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for from all this geometry, analytical geometry analysis. Why do I want this? Because I want to plug this into this equation. So this equation is going to be rho theta double dot u t hat plus rho theta dot multiplied by theta dot multiplied by u n hat. So this is going to be rho theta double dot in the direction of u t hat plus rho theta dot square u n hat. You'll find this equation in the equation sheets that we have. Okay. So this is actually the equation of the acceleration. Okay. I can write it in a different way. Hat. We already know that theta dot is equal to velocity, right? So the velocity square is going to be rho square multiplied by theta dot squared. So I can write this as rho theta dot ut hat plus v square. But if this is v square, that means I need to find out if that there's a rho square, but I only have here one rho not rho squared. So I can divide v squared over rho, it's gonna give me the same value. v squared is gonna be rho squared theta dot squared. Once I divide them by rho, I'm gonna end up with this, and this is in the direction of n hat. Does anybody have any question on this? No, I need the direction. So you should have this a direction. No, I mean like the world times theta dot. That's what I meant. Like, is there any way to break it down in some way so it's a v squared over rho? Oh, you mean you can put it as a velocity, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can do that. Like, you can remove this and put it as a velocity. Okay. If you want to. But I'll, I'm going to tell you why I need it this way. Okay, so. The conclusion from this, I have been half an hour talking about this. Why? Because I want to tell you that the velocity vector is equal to rho theta dot in the direction of u t hat. And it doesn't have any component in the normal direction. It is always tangent. The velocity is always tangent. If you're solving a problem and you've got a normal component of the velocity, so there's something wrong. Okay? And the acceleration is equal to rho theta double dot u t hat plus v squared over rho in the direction of the normal. And we call this as a tangent component, a tangent, and we call this a normal. And I need you to understand these two components very good. So the tangent component of the acceleration is the one that makes the particle slowing down or speeding up. So for example, if I give you a problem, and I told you that we have a body is moving on a curve and it's speeding up with this rate. So I'm giving you the tangent acceleration, not the total acceleration, okay? But if I told you that the total acceleration of the body is this, that means that I give you the acceleration. So this one, let me write it this way. The time rate of a change of the velocity magnitude. Time rate of a change of the velocity magnitude. Okay? And this is the rate at which the object is slowing down.
Where's the clean up? So let's come to this component, the normal component. So the normal component is a recently change of the velocity direction. Okay? So this one that tells you how the component is a change in direction. And also this is the component that makes the body move on a curve. If you lose this component, like let's assume that you have a body and you are throwing like this body's moving on a curve. And somehow it lost the um, the, uh, the normal acceleration, this body's gonna leave the curve and move in a straight line. Same thing, the, like the, the planets and the stars, how they move around each other. Because like the planets is moving around the sun or something because there's an attraction be between the, the masses. And what keeps the planets is moving in their, in their like orbits because they have a normal acceleration. If they lose this normal acceleration, this body's gonna go this way. Somehow, if the sun disappeared, the, all the planets is gonna throw it away in like in a linear direction, but because there's a normal component of the acceleration, they keep them on the best. If you lose this, so the body's not is not gonna move on the best anymore. Like you have the velocity, can you see? The velocity wanna go this way, and the tangent acceleration wanna go this way. So if they lose the normal acceleration, so this body's gonna leave the best and move this way. But because you have a normal acceleration, so this body is keep attached to the mass and keep changing the velocity direction, okay? So the AN is the time rate of the change of the velocity direction. And this is the acceleration needed an object moving on a curve. Okay. I need you to focus on this. What, what we did was that when we differentiated this equation, we differentiated this part to vertex, the magnitude, to get the tangent, the tangent acceleration. So it's the time rate of the magnitude, the tangent acceleration. And then we differentiate the direction. Then we get the A normal. So this is the time rate of the direction. So this is how we come up with A tangent and A normal. Time rate of the magnitude, time rate of the change of the magnitude, time rate of the change of the direction. Okay, so let's solve a quick example. Does anybody have any questions so far? This one? Yeah. The acceleration uh -huh. needed to keep an object moving on a curve. Perfect. Thank you. I'll try not to write here anymore. Just sometimes lose I'm so excited I want to write. Which kind? Which kind? So this example says that there's, uh, when a skier reaches a point A, so you have, for example, if this is my x y, and there is a mountain, like something like this, okay, this mountain, you have a skier at some, somewhere here, and it's a skiing on this mountain at point A. So I'm giving you the best that this skier is moving on. So the bass has an equation equal to y equal 1 over 20x squared. So this sphere is moving on this bass. It's a parabolic curve. Okay? And I'm telling you that he has a speed of 6 meters per second. The velocity is 6 meters per second. 
which is increasing at a rate of two meters per second squared. So I'm telling you that this is speed, the tangent, that is always tangent, is increasing by two meters per second squared. Is this a tangent acceleration or a normal acceleration? Tangent, okay, because this is speeding up. So right now I'm not telling you the problem that this is a tangent, but you have to figure it out yourself because I'm saying it is increasing at two meters per second squared. But if I told you it's decreasing by five meters per second squared, we are gonna put this negative, okay? Okay, and then I'm asking you to determine the direction of his velocity and the direction and the magnitude of his acceleration. So I'm asking about the direction of this velocity and what is the direction? Determine the direction of his velocity and the, the direction and magnitude of his acceleration. Yeah. At, at this instant, at A, so I just want you to solve this at A, and neglect the size of the sphere in the calculation. So the size of his body doesn't matter, okay? All right, so the first thing, I wanted the direction of this velocity. And we know that this sphere is here, okay? So if I draw a tangent, here, I'm gonna know the direction of the velocity. What is the trajectory? And to know this tangent, V, so if I, I know that the V has a magnitude of six, so all what I want is the direction. So, and the direction is the tangent to this curve. If I wanted to get the tangent to this curve, I wanna get dy dx, right? So you have y. How can I get dy dx? Like, you want, you want something like this, like this. If this is x and this is y, you need d, y, dx. It's going to equal to n theta, and then you will be able to know what is the theta of this velocity. Right? Okay, do you guys understand that? Like, I differentiate this. Okay, I have y. So y is equal to 1 over 20 x squared. So dy dx is going to be equal to differentiate this with respect to the x, not t, because we are getting tangent, not velocity. It's gonna be one over 10 x, x one. All right, so I have the dy dx. Yeah, and I'm telling you that this also, this is given. At this point, a, x is equal to 10 meter. And y is equal to five, this is given as a problem. So at A, if you want to get dy dx, so it's going to be equal 1 over 10 multiplied by 10, it's going to be equal to 1. So dy dx, which is equal to 10 theta, is equal to 1. Do you guys know what is theta? 10 theta equal to 1. What is the value of theta? Right away. 45 degrees. Why? Because if you have any triangle that is 5 and 5, so the theta is going to be, for example, 45 degrees, so 10, 45 is equal to 5 over 5, which is equal to 1. So it's 45 degrees. So the direction of the velocity is at 45 degrees. So when I ask you for the direction of the velocity, I need to know what is the value of the theta that the velocity is making with the horizontal. So I got V. So let's get to the next step. The, uh, the, the direction and the magnitude of the acceleration. Keep in mind that this is only a tangent, okay? So a, we know that is a is equal to a tangent in the tangent direction, a t hat or u t hat, plus a normal in the u m hat, so I know that. Okay, let's find, we have a t, a t, We know it's equal to 2. We need to get a normal. We know that the a normal is equal to v squared 
over rho. I know v, right? V is 6, but I don't know what is the radius of this curve. There is an equation that you should know, and I believe it's in the, um, the equations sheet, that says that rho for any curve, if you have a curve y as a function in x, okay, like the one that we have, you want to find the radius at any point x, y, it's equal to 1 plus dy dx all square, and all this is to the power 3 over 2, and this is divided by the second derivative of y, which is the cube dx, okay? This, I'm, I'm sure it's in the equation sheet. Keep this in your mind. If I give you any curves, y function x, and you want to get rho, the radius at any point, x and y, you substitute in this equation. So I have dy dx, I already got it here. dy dx is equal to 1 over 10. 1 over 10x. But I'm only interested at row at 10, so I'm going to keep it as 1. I need to get a second derivative. Do you guys can get the second derivative, like d squared y dx squared? 1 over 10x is going to be equal 1 over 10. So if I want to substitute in this equation, so it's going to be 0, it's going to be 1 plus dy dx squared at 10. So it's going to be 1. And this one is squared, and all of this to the power 3 over 2, divided by 1 over 10. So when you calculate this, you will find that rho at x equals 10 meter is going to be 28.28 meter. So I got rho. Once I get it, I can substitute this equation, which is 6 squared over 28.28. So the A normal is going to be 1.27 meter per second squared. So right now I can have an idea about the, the value and the magnitude of the acceleration. So the acceleration is going to be 2 in the ut hat direction plus 1.27 in the un hat direction. This is not enough. I get the a as a vector, but I'm asking you a magnitude and direction. So if you want a magnitude of a, it's going to be equal to. So you have an acceleration that is, for example, let's say, okay, so this is the velocity. Let's say that this one is right. And the velocity is this way. Okay. And you know that the velocity is at 45 degrees. So you know that this is at 45 degrees. And the acceleration is also positive. It's 2. It's in this direction. The tangent is something like this, right? Sorry, this is the tangent. This is the tangent direction. And this is the normal direction. You have an and a tangent, right? So this normal component and tangent component, what I'm going to do I want to get the magnitude and the direction of the magnitude. So for example, the magnitude is something, it's going to be something like this. This is the acceleration, the magnitude. How can I get it? A is going to be equal to the root square of 2 squared plus 1.27 squared. This is the x component and this is the y component. But it's tangent only, it's the same thing. So you get the magnitude, it's going to be 2.3 seven meters per second squared, okay? I got the total value of the acceleration. Right now, I need the direction. Okay, so if you want the direction, what you have for here is the direction of the tangent, but I want the direction of the magnitude. So if I was able to get this angle, so I will know what is the, this is the x horizontal, and this is the magnitude and the direction of the I want to get this angle. How can I get it? I can get the total angle between A and this. I can get this angle. How? You get the tan of this value. Like, you know, for example, if I'm saying that this is the tangent direction, and this is the normal direction, and this is the, uh, the acceleration, if I want to get this angle, it's going to be tan inverse, tan, sorry, tan theta. This theta is going to be equal to 1.37 over 2. So you will get this value 
1.27 degree. Okay, the 32.41, not the angle with the horizontal, it's the angle with the tangent direction. Okay, right? This is the angle between the tangent direction, this angle, 32.41. But what we're interested in direction, we are interested in the direction from the x axis, this axis. But I know that this is a 45 degree from here to here, so I can get this a small angle. So you want to get this a small angle, let's call it P, it's going to be 45 degree minus 32.41, it's going to be 12.58 degree. Do you guys understand that? Is it difficult? Yeah. Is it rocket science? It's just a geometry. Okay, so, so let's let's do it one more time. Let's see what is the component of this problem. I give you velocity and I give you a tangent. And I'm asking you what is the direction of this velocity. So you have the magnitude, the direction, you have a curve, and we know that the velocity is always tangent to this curve. You differentiate this, dy dx is gonna be equal to the t tan theta, mm -hmm. and then you get theta. We got a 45 degree, one step, differentiate this, Get the tan, theta, and then get theta, okay? Any curve, like if I give you a curve, whatever, five x squared plus x plus two, you differentiate it, substitute with the value at the x of interest, and then get tan theta, and once you get it, like dy dx is always equal to tan theta. Why? Because any x and any y, if you wanna get theta, so it's gonna be y over x, or dy over x, so tan theta is y over x or dy over x. Once you know tan theta, you get tan inverse, you get theta. So the very part, is it difficult? No. So professor, uh, you could say that when you find the direction of velocity, you need to find that angle of that tangent. Yeah, you need to find the angle. Of the tangent. Yeah. Because we are Vector. working with tangent normal. Yeah. Okay, so we need to find what is the tangent what is uh, the angle on the tangent? Between x, between the horizontal. Okay. Yeah. So let's get to the hard part, the acceleration. I'm giving you the tangent part. So the next part, but I'm asking you, like somebody is gonna say, okay, you give me the acceleration and you are asking for magnitude, it's a two. No, this is the magnitude of the tangent component. You need to find the normal component. So the normal component, I told you, it's a v square over rho, and you already have v. So the hardest part is to find rho. So you have an equation that you substitute in to get rho, okay, direct. Just one step, you got rho, you got the value of a n. And you already have the a tangent, so you can write a as a function of the tangent component and the normal component. You get the square root of both of them because they are like, it's still like the, the angle between the tangent and the normal is still 90 degree like x and y. So we can apply the same by Pythagorean equation. Can you go over where that a um, normal? This one? No, the one. Yeah. This one? Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. So we got, we, I already gave you a tangent, and we know how the normal component came from, right? Mm -hmm. B square over rho. Okay. So we know both components. I just put them together here as an a equal 2 in the direction of the tangent and 1.27 in the direction of the normal. And you put them together to solve for what? This is the general vector of the acceleration. Okay. 2 and the ut hat direction and 1.27 is the un hat direction. But this is a still didn't solve the problem completely. You will get points if you get this. So you told me that I already know the tangent and I already know the normal component and I put them together. But what I'm asking you for, I wanted the magnitude of A, not the components of A. So you are saying that you have 2 here and 1.27 here. So I want you to like, this is like a, a triangle. So you get the square root of both of them, so you get the magnitude like this. Hey, you have a component here and a component there. You get the square root, two square, 1.27, so you've got the magnitude of A. So this is the first part, okay? So the hardest part is to get the direction. So I can, I can here from the same triangle, I can get the tan theta, but the theta that I, I get it, it's from, measured from the tan, okay? Not measured from x, okay? So how, like once I get it, like once I say tan theta is equal to y over x, and then you got it 32 degrees. So what is the difference between 32 degrees and 45 degrees? 
32 degree is measured from the tangent, not measured from the horizontal. So what I did, I know where is the tangent, and I measured 32 degree, and I came here. So doing some geometry, you know that this is 45 degree. So this angle, 32, plus the angle that I don't know, x, is equal to 45. So x is equal to 45 minus 32.41. So this is something like this and this. And you know that this is 45 degree. And you have a line here. And you know what, what is this, the a? And you know that this is 32. So what is this angle? So this angle x that you don't know, you know that x plus 32 equal 45. So x is going to be equal to 13, right? Is that, yeah? Uh, so, Professor, in this case, we can, we can create the an uh, as a uh, x, y yeah. prime. Yeah, x, y prime. prime. You can do it as x, y prime. So it can be the same thing, mm -hmm. same equation. But we call them tangent and normal because yeah. it's the property of the curve, because they are on a curve. But yeah, you can call it x prime and y prime, like different yeah. coordinate systems. Yeah, but it's just moving. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So based on what you explained, I just have a question to make sure I get it. Yeah. So the, the angle of the uh, velocity, yeah. right? Isn't it just the angle of the a tangent? So they're the same? Yeah, the, the angle of the velocity is the tangent. Yeah, the same thing. The acceleration so tangent. The what? The acceleration tangent. Yeah, the same thing. They both have the same direction. Yeah. But what I'm looking for here is the, is the angle of the yeah. Right, so let's solve um, another problem to make sure that we understand this correctly. And next time we, we're going to go the polar coordinate system. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this part that I did, like the uh, groove and everything, you are not required to prove it. I could have written the equation right away, so like, and I'm of course like, here's the acceleration equation, here's the velocity equation. But I spent like half an hour, an hour just to tell you where this is coming from, so that when you solve, you know where this. So and also I encourage you to work your mind on a deep to so know where is this coming from, you check the notes, you check the reference, and we'll know where this is coming from. Yeah, somebody have a question? Over there. Is that a question? Yeah. yeah. Um, wait, where was the 28.28 used, the row? Where this is coming from? Your hand Yeah. Oh, what, how are you using it? Oh, um, where was like... Okay, so I wanted to get the normal acceleration. And I knew from the equations that I wrote over there that the normal acceleration has a value of v squared over rho. So I put here, E n equal v squared over rho. In the problem, it's given v, but rho is not given. So I use the equation of the curve, which y or rho 1 over 20 x squared. And I have a general rule of the rho. This rule give you the radius on any position, of any location of the curve. Given the equation of the curve, it's equal to 1 plus the first derivative squared, all of the power 3 over 2, divided by the second derivative of y with respect to x. Okay. So all this, this rule you don't have to re remember, like it's in the equation. But all that you have to do, you need to figure out what is the value of dy dx, what is the value of the second derivative. And you have the equation of the curve, we'll be able to find that. You differentiate dy dx, it's going to be 1 over 10x. Differentiate another time, it's going to be 1 over 10x. So you differentiate two times, you will get this, and then you get this, and then you substitute, and then you'll get 28.4. Got the row, divide the velocity over the row. Okay? All right, does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, so let's solve uh, another problem. So this example is saying that there is a race yeah, well, car traveled around a horizontal oh, circular right. track yeah. that has a yeah, radius yeah, of so 300 yeah. meters. So you have a circular yeah. track yeah. like this, yeah. excuse yeah. me, yeah. circular track like this, and you have a car 
and you have a car that is moved on this track, and this track has a radius of 300, okay? All right, and it says that if the car increases its speed at a constant rate, seven foot per second squared. So what is the seven foot per second squared? Is? Tangent acceleration. I'm saying increases at a constant, so you have a tangent, it's constant, and equal to 7 feet per second squared. All right, so I got a tangent. The second thing is starting from rest. So you know that D node is equal to zero. Determine the time needed for it to reach an acceleration, okay, to reach an acceleration of E feet per second squared. So I told you like reach um, an acceleration. So that means is this a tangent, is it a normal, or is it a total acceleration? Total acceleration, right? So since I said it's a speeding or slowing, so you mean that you were well, talking about the tangent, okay? But since we said at the end, we said determine the time needed for it to reach an acceleration, that means it's the total acceleration. So the total acceleration, so ask about the time. What is the time? It's right here. What is the time t? To get to acceleration equal to eight feet per second squared, right? Okay. So there is, I know that this A is, has a tangent component and has a normal component. I know I only have the A tangent, but I can get from the tangent, I can get the velocity. How can I get the velocity? You know that the tangent component is the time rate of the change of the velocity magnitude. You can apply the linear equation that we learned on the tangent component, like the same thing, the dv dt is equal to, we can say that A tangent, is equal to dv tangent, but I, I don't have to write tangent because always the velocity is tangent, okay? dt, right? So dv is equal to at dt, and then you integrate, so you will have v minus v node equal to the integration of at, which is constant, which is seven, dt from t node to t, right? This is the equations that we learned. So v node is zero because it starts from rest. I'm saying that here it says, Explicitly, if the car increases its speed at a constant rate, starting from rest. So V node is zero. So I know that the velocity is equal to, when I integrate seven dt, it's gonna be seven t, right? T node is equal to zero, and I substitute this t, so this is still, what is the time? So the time is still variable in my equation. But right now, I can say that the acceleration is equal to a tangent and the tangent direction plus a normal and then a direction. And this is the vector. And I want I know AT. AT is seven. But I don't know the normal, right? So how can I get the whole? V square over row, right? So A N is equal to V square over row. What is the V squared? We just got it, 7T. So this is gonna be 49 T squared over rho. And I give you the radius of this, so it was 300, so over 300. So I know the magnitude of AT, and I know the magnitude of AN. So I can say that A is the square root of AT squared plus AN squared. I don't care about the direction right now. Like the t because I'm, I didn't ask about direction, I asked about time. Mm -hmm. So I have a constant, seven squared, plus this part, which is 49 t squared over 300 all squared. Don't remember, you have a square here and a square here. The t is gonna be to the power four. four. And all this is equal to eight, because I'm looking at the time when the acceleration is equal to eight. Yeah, you have a question? I got it. All right, so if I wanna get this, I need to square eight. So eight is squared is gonna be equal to 64, and this is gonna be seven squared plus 49 t squared over 300 all squared. 
So this is gonna be end up with like 49 plus 0 0.027 t to the power four. Then you can get t how? You send the 49 next on the left hand side. You divide by 0 0.027 and take the root to the power four to both sides. So t is gonna be equal to four point eight seven. <laughs> and that velocity at that time, like because here it asks about determine the time for it, and what is the speed at this instant? What is the speed at this instant when it reaches to acceleration eight? So here we got the velocity as a function of time. So velocity is equal to seven multiplied by t, and I already got t, so it's a seven multiplied by four point eight seven. So the velocity is equal to thirty three point nine eight. Does anybody have any question on this problem? Is it difficult? No, that one is easy. So what is difficult about this one? The angle bar. So the angle bar, you need to revise the geometry a little bit. Like you need to, first I need to make sure that you know how to get angles. Like if I tell you that we have a body that has X and Y component, and you want to get the magnitude, you want to square root of this, square, like the square root of the sum of these two. And if you want to get direction, so it's always x over y, or dx over y, okay? Either it's tangent normal, or either it's x and y. So that's actually what I want to do for this problem. All right, so I believe that quiz is online at 12. It's a 30 minutes. Make sure that you are alone, not together. This is not a group quiz, so everyone needs to be separate. And everyone is going to have different numbers. Mm -hmm. Like there is 120 different numbers for the question, okay? So everyone has different numbers. You can solve the quiz. And make sure once you solve it, because once you solve it, you are going to put the number in the box. And it's going to say, for example, that your number that you got is wrong and you got zero. Okay, don't worry, scan your quiz, and I'm gonna give you points on the steps that you have. So make sure, after you solve the quiz, take a picture and upload it. And this is gonna take two minutes, so make sure that you have two minutes at the end to take a picture and upload it on Canvas, because I know many of you is gonna like wait until the 30 minutes done and say, okay, I didn't do it, so make sure that you have time to scan, because if you didn't get the number right, you can get some points for your steps that you have run in the homework. Okay, right. Does anybody have any questions? Even if we get the number right, you still want to show our work, right? Yeah. Okay. And then from now until uh, 12 hours. Yeah. Come on. Si lo deja uno. Sí. You ready? No. Yeah. <laughs> 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 